All right, hello everybody. Today I'm going to cover, as you can see this if you've remembered my other video about preamptudes, I'm going to talk about biasing and and load lines for power amps uh, and for or for pentodes period, right? It works the same way for pentodes anywhere. Uh, the only difference, as I mentioned, on choosing a power, an output supply or uh, an output transformer was that you needed to kind of adjust the um, impotence of the transformer for what the tube expected. And that is uh, all I'm going to cover here really is just some of the subtle differences. You should really watch the preamp tube video first that was from several weeks back because the technique is roughly the same. The subtle differences I'll explain, but it still shows you the general idea. So I won't go into quite as much depth on that on purpose to kind of not uh, cover too much. But here's the idea. This is a 6L6 GC. I've drawn a load line and I'm going to explain to you why I chose the spot. The, this point doesn't matter much. Really, you can adjust this left or right depending on the voltage you'll work your plate at. And you can kind of play with that idea. So you could literally go as high as 600. Now, the one thing you have to be careful of is look at the data sheet. If you wanted to go that high, 6L6s can sometimes stand that. You have to check particular tubes. But you also will have a maximum voltage for the grid as well. So you'll need to at least have some kind of dropping going on to lower those. Or sometimes people need to use a separate winding in the transformer to get a lower voltage for that as well. So you have to make sure you make that decision correctly. But effectively, you choose what voltage you want to work in. And a lot of them tend to work between the 350 to 400-ish range. I'm just going to set it at 350 here. Um, and then the same way that you did this before, you can calculate what you want kind of your max current to be uh, and, and kind of set that as well. Um, you don't want the max current to be too high on a tube because you 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 know you won't, don't want to end up burning the tubes up or running too hot. You generally want to kind of have the slope that will come down here for the for that to be a little lower. But the problem you get is the lower you go on voltage, as you can see, the less amplification you'll get because this range you can kind of see. I'm kind of drawn this larger to smaller on purpose to give you an idea. If you were to if you if you were up here in this range, you can see it fits a lot. But if you and if you were to go clear all the way over here somewhere in higher voltages this this swing could be really big i mean these could be even bigger than i've got like i could i guess i could kind of go like this to try and expand it in size so you can see i can actually get these output and input swings to be really high um now if you notice i'm keeping it to the right a little bit and i'll tell you why um part of the reason you want this really high up here you need to have whatever you're choosing as your current rating be to the slightly above what this area called the knee you want your um your plate characteristics need to be in what's called the linear mode to make the tube perform more consistently. Otherwise you can't guess how it will perform. Anytime you get into this zone that's through here where these drop off sharply, uh, that's the after the knee, you get really inconsistent behavior in a, in a short distance and therefore you're going to not be able to predict the behavior very well and get really crummy performance. So you want most of your performance to be in these flat lines. So as you can see, the, the, like the lower you go down these, the further to the left they go, which gives you more room there. But you also want to try and push it as far to the right as possible by this bottom part. So you choose a spot that will fit roughly what current plate current you want, also that what the tube can handle as its maximum. You'd have to look that up. And then you would go from there. So if I was to bring quickly in, uh, I've got, oops, that's the, that's okay too, but I've got a, a spreadsheet here. This particular one says that it's maximum um, uh, plate voltage is 450. It's maximum plate current. Let's see. Oh, it's just saying plate, uh, plate dissipation of 30 watts. You'd have to do the math on that, like at, at what voltage you're running. And what you know, what what output wattage you're burning? Because if you go too hot there, you'll burn it up. But you can also kind of do similar math if you look at the AB versus or the AB tube here. You can see uh, what your plate current you might want to be maximum depending on voltage ratings. These are estimates, but it gives you ideas of what ballpark you want to be in. So as you go up in volts, it can handle higher amps, and it's telling you what the maximum. Uh, that's the signal that we want maximum. Or sorry, ma maximum signal plate current should be no more than 210. So you basically kind of want at that point at 450 volts, you would come back to this pick this thing that we had and you don't want it more than 210. So we could put it up to 200 and that means we could put this to 450 ish. And that's how you would set that line. And it, you can see it also is above this curve. So you're good, but you want your operating range to not dip down to this range too much. So you would bias for the amount of uh, amplification you're going to do to find some point possibly down lower in the scale. So you would kind of similar to we did in this first where you choose a couple points that you think would cross a particular line that you might want it to be on, you know, and, and in the negative bias range here that it's showing and pick that for there. So I, I, I don't want to cover that again. I think that will make sense if you go back to the first video and watch it because it's the identical concept here. What's more important is just knowing where this line needs to fit on a, on a, on a pentode. The pentode's behavior is way different from a, from a triode in this range. And so you're just attempting to try and maximize the output while uh, minimizing kind of distortion and problems. 
uh, and you will get a cleaner signal but quieter by kind of lowering your voltage and lowering your plate current but you also notice as well if i was to come down like this this signal is going to start basically hit to that top oops i don't want to do that sorry uh, i switched on accident there so this will slide down but like now you're kind of just to fit that size inside of this range that where you know wherever it might be becomes a bit trickier um so it's just about doing that balance in this case if i if you wanted more headroom and but you know you're and magnify or sorry if you want more amplification you would raise this up to maybe 200 milliamps and then you can see then you would be able to in theory get really large output swing and that's what this kind of the left side is you don't want it to go too much below that the right side can go all the way up to basically about here but that's your voltage swing now between that four or whatever that is 450 all the way down to maybe 50 volts and you would be huge voltage swing so you can do a lot more amplification and pushing that tube a lot harder so then once you do that there's another simple bit of math that's what i wanted to cover if you go back to the data sheet as well um, you can see in these ranges there's different voltages and it says effective load resistance plate to plate and gives those values for you but you can also calculate them pretty quickly because we know what the plate current and voltage will be that's what you generally should see as the resistance um, that it will want to see as well so 1750 for a single tube right we're doing one you know one tube from that data sheet but then if i look at it for two tubes that becomes 3500 well that 3500 fits really closely with what say this wants at 360 which is 3800 and the reason these two are slightly different is based upon the amount of plate current so this is how you're biasing the tube but it gives you an example of different bias points and how much uh load resistance you get by biasing it that way so you're going to kind of want to effectively try and balance that and if you had say 6600 here then you would need to get an output transformer that can handle it a little differently as well. But you can also see here uh, on these graphs how to get for the different. Uh, so, so as you can see, by the way, one tube and four tubes is the same. Is the same, and I'll tell you part of why that is. When you are doing tubes and push pull, if there's just two tubes, you have to calculate each tube singularly, and then you sum them up because they are working in series basically through the transformer. But when you add an additional tube to each half of the push pull phase, you put two of them in parallel hooked into two in series so similar to like way speaker impedances work you double them to put two in series but then when you add two more to each half you have those two and so it brings you back to where it was for one tube so you can effectively kind of assume that you will get uh, ratings similar uh, to that as well um, so two tubes versus four tubes hopefully that part makes sense so i hope that if you look through all of these different videos i've done related to preamp tube biasing power tube biasing how to choose your power transformer and your output transformer you have all the math that you need to do to figure that out. Now, it's also a lot easier than this anyway. This is just to try and get the deeper understanding because in most cases, you can look at an equivalent amps output section, for example. Look at a Fender Baseman 100 output transformer that's got six 6L6 GCs and see what that transformer was. You could try and get one identical to that and just use it because it works or you could try and ask for one to be wound very similar to those specs but adjusting the, maybe you want to try a little different um, uh, impotence rating a little higher a little lower than that one now you have to realize that it costs a lot of money to get custom wines but if you're trying to really experiment and learn that may be worth it for you for me because i don't want to pay instead of a hundred dollars for a transformer i don't want to pay 250 to 450 dollars to do all these custom windings um it may be worth it if you're trying to build amps for a living to try and spend some time trying different transformers find the right one and then start buying them in bulk but for us hobbyists that's not quite as reasonable so usually you just borrow from what is already being done so all right, everybody, hopefully that kind of, I've gotten a kind of four different videos done over several different weeks with a few inter, intermittent uh, things that kind of interrupted that talk about how to make those design decisions. Please let me know if there's other stuff you want me to talk about. Hopefully this tech tip will be valuable. Um, please let me know in the, in the comments below if there's something I've missed. And please do give me a like, a thumbs up, subscribe. And when you subscribe, also hit that little bell icon next to it or you won't get all the notifications of my uh, stuff. Uh, we'll be having more Dumble video this week, and as well, I will also have a live stream most likely this weekend. So look forward to that with you guys. Cheers. Thanks.